Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I specialize in war logistics offer and the age of AI and the growing need to understand technology and the digital world around us. I have a strong foundation to build from and I'm trying to pass these skill sets and these tools on to the average person as the majority don't have an understanding and honestly, uh, it's way over their head. But for those that are competent and able to navigate these waters, it allows extreme resources capabilities and just a strong foundation to scale from what I have in front of me is a large application that I'm just kind of cycling through right now but there are some changes that I'm currently making in my technology stack there is back-end development, there's front-end development, and there's more back-end development. <laughs> it is a large mess of architecture needed to be a competent developer nowadays. But I'm trying to break this down in the most digestible way possible. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a base foundation of a Flask application. In my prior tutorial, we built a strong foundation with Django, Docker, and now we're trying to driving into what is uh, Flask and building off of uh, Plotly and the infrastructure that they have set up in front of us. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be building this home page right here. Uh, we are going to eventually scale it into other different areas uh, and we have a private repository that is available for purchase for anybody interested in getting more of a foundation. As I have over here uh, what I am offering in that repository, but it allows you the ability to move components around. It has the same dashboard that we have, uh, but one of the really great things that that I've currently added into the application is a way for me to display informational data on these icons. So if we look on the, let me go into the better one because this is a cleaner one and I'm currently reformatting my code. Uh, so bear with me for a second. But if I go into the debug tool over here, we can see what we're dealing with. As I hover over a location, we can see that this is labeled as an icon layer, where if I click on something that isn't, or if I just hover over something that isn't, it's not going to show that it isn't, you know? Uh, if I go into click state, if I click on an icon layer, it's going to show the icon layer. If I click on something that isn't an icon layer, it's going to show that it isn't. And I also have the same thing for drag state and and drag state as these are different numbers if you look at the X and Y axis. So with this, uh, this allows me the ability to scale what is a strong base foundation of this map, I'm trying to build something more powerful than Google Maps and the age of being able to track planes above your head, drones, uh, a bunch of other different things that are going on at the ground floor. Having a bird's eye perspective gives you a lot of capabilities and it's my own personal mini map and what is this video game of life, you know, the way I look at it. But if I can continuously build this out and establish more cheat codes on top of this architecture, I can integrate AI systems into my workflow. I can scale into areas that most individuals will never be able to touch or expand into. So with this understanding, uh, I am trying to make it uh, as easy as possible for anybody who is interested in developing alongside me uh, to have the capabilities uh, to see what they are doing. I'm currently building out this rich code text editor. If I dive down, you know, we can jump into different sections. As you can see here, it will cycle through depending on what I select. Uh, but just to give an idea of how this works, if I copy this code right here of this component, and if I bring this component into the rich text editor, we can see that this card right here is going to change. And now what I have is a way for me to test what is this interactive dashboard. I can move these components around to fit the screen and everything is resizable. Uh, this is just a really advanced application that I've been working on for some time. But this has a lot of room to grow. It has a lot of work that still needs to be done. But for the moment, I want to get you guys integrated into the development process.
I want to show you the equivalent of getting a Django application set up where it took us about an hour plus maybe uh, to get the the database, uh, the foundation to dockerize uh, and to get a template integrated. This is going to be a lot faster. Right now we're sitting at five minutes and we're going to see how fast we can get this set up and I'm going to include a repository in the links down below that's going to be public and free for you to easily download and to do the exact same thing if you're interested in following along. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my code editor. This is the project at hand. With Dash applications, a lot of people foolishly, and at the start it was true, believe that you can only build single page applications. Uh, for the majority of resources, some are outdated and it's easy to fall into some spaghetti code as you see a lot of projects focus on this apps.py file and it is extremely long, complex, and it's hard to really it puts me in a stressful area trying to understand everything where if we can compartmentalize each individual page to its specific page then we can build off of that and we can have a proper way to see what is going on so what we're going to do is we're going to do just that I'm not going to write everything line by line because you can look at the code and you can read. My goal is to explain the concepts and to make it easy for you to just take the ground and run. So one of the thing about Dash and building out Dash applications with Flask is name casing is extremely important. This pages directory needs to be labeled pages and your pages need to be displayed within this file because you will not be able to create a templates folder for example as in Django you use a templates folder that doesn't work with dash it has to be named pages so keep that in mind uh, the other thing that I want to bring your attention is assets assets is another folder that has to be labeled correctly outside of that anything underneath that is fair grain other than styles.css that's going to override the overall styling of your application, but the uh, images doesn't really matter. You can link to those directly through just going to your asset URL path. And that's what we're doing at the start whenever we are creating a application. So the way that Dash works is that we call on Dash, we give it a name of what the Dash app will be named, uh, and we can add external style sheets. For example, this is linking to a CSS file link of Font Awesome, so that I can use icons within the application. Use pages is required for this because we are trying to create a foundation for scalable Dash applications, not something that is just a single page application. So I'd rather teach the proper way of doing things. Allowing this uses pages references this directory and it will go through the pages and display it. And the way that we do that is, is we have this app.layout, which is required on running the application, and this is referring to an HTML div, and within this HTML div, we have this dash.pages container, which is referenced uh, from this use pages, it's provided, so from dash. With this, uh, we have a simple if name equals main, which just says if the name is the file that we are running, then we are going to run the server. Right now, we have to do a simple uh, pip install of the requirements. So I'm going to do that real quick to show you how you would get started in your own development environment. You'll need to make sure that you have a ENV activated. So an environment is something that you can look up yourself and I I'm not going to talk about it because it's easy to get set up uh, within this IDE. It's something that automatically is created for me, but it allows me to put all of the packages within these lib and bin folders, and it creates a way for uh, me to just organize the things that I'm installing uh, to this project and not to my overall system. So with this, if you do a pip install, dash r and you reference the requirements 
app.txt. Uh, this will allow you to install everything that I have organized for you. And I've done my best to make it um, as updated as possible, uh, but to also allow us the ability uh, to publish it on an actual server. So I'm also going to be including the requirements.txt needed to host a application of the equivalent of what we are building out on Python anywhere. And that will be in this GitHub repo, which is going to be public for everybody to look at and read. All right, everybody, it took a little while to load everything in in regards to just the pip install. Uh, but with everything set up, we are good to run the application. So I'm just going to go over to the app.py. I'm going to press the run app. Uh, you could also just do Python and then point to the app.py. Those are the two ways of getting the application running. But as you can see, the dash application is running and it is on this port. So if this isn't running for you, the reason is, is this map in the middle. As you can see, this is a very interactive map. It requires you to bring in an API to get this styling specifically brought in because I wanted to show the use case and how this all works in the future and it's one of the major APIs that I'm using to build out my full stack application. Uh, so if you're looking to resolve that, go to Mapbox. Mapbox is where I am pulling the styling from in regards to these applications that I'm building out. Uh, it's very generous. As you can see, I have over uh, 50,000 free loads a month. Uh, so if you dive into their API, you can scroll down to access token and uh, you can see that you can create a access token and you can bring this into your application. Then you will copy this. Uh, you'll go into the application itself and then we are going to go into the top and we're going to create a new file. It's going to be a Python file. We're going to name it uh, mapbox uh, underscore token uh, and this is going to be a .py file. Because I already have one made, I'm just going to add a one just for the example. Then I'm going to type in mapbox underscore token again and I'm going to point to the API token that I have created off of the mapbox website. So with that, you should be able to run the application just fine from there on and out. Uh, you just need to dive into each specific page that you would like to edit. Uh, you can look into how everything is designed. Uh, you're welcome to just dive into each specific section. With me, I like to organize this in a way uh, where my templates is representing graphs. So for example, the map styling, that was the graph that was causing us issues because it requires this map box token. So it wasn't able to run based off of that. But what we're doing with us adding that file is from import uh, the map box token and just calling on that variable. Uh, we are putting that in the token variable, uh, which is going to be thrown into the map box access token on a go.layout so that whenever we return the figure, it is bringing the appropriate information uh, to the screen. Um, I also added a ability to run this directly uh, through uh, what was the if equals underscore main command. Uh, and this shows you that map, at least a larger version of it. So you can go in here and you can start editing uh, this specifically once you get this down. You can add specific styles yourself by just going over here and uh, whenever you go onto the website you can select different maps some are available publicly or you could create your own and you could just put that in the style variable and that's a good starting point to reference uh, the other thing that I would like to show you as far as information is concerned uh, is if we go into like let's just go into analytics for a second um, I can kind of give you an idea of how this works uh, this is just one page within the application uh, we have three of these the initial one is the home page we have archive and analytics. These are really basic pages, uh, just boilerplate code to kind of show you how it works. But if you would like to register a new page in the application, you create this dash dot register underscore page name. And this name case allows you to bring in the application. Uh, you could do a callback or the other alternative is you could do a at uh, dash dot callback uh, for inside um, stuff that isn't referenced 
referenced in the app.py, you have the ability to call on this variable, which is a very powerful variable, because this allows you to live update the state of your application based on an output and an input. So the way that this works is, is for example, this video output and input is within the home page. And if I click on video ID and I copy this video target, you can see that this is a div. So what is happening here is on a input of this ID right here, which is video dropdown. So if I copy video dropdown and I go back and I paste that up top and I'm able to see where this is located, we can see that this ID is referencing a DCC dot dropdown variable, which allows us different options. And I labeled it as a video intro, and then the value is the available videos. So if I go back down, uh, what is happening here is whenever that input uh, sees a change in the state of the application based off of this variable name on the ID, it runs this function. And this function it takes in different videos, which match the input and output that are provided. So all it is doing is it's running this iframe, which is hosting the video on archive.org, which is a amazing place to see a bunch of different resources in regards to the internet. So with that, I'm just going to give you guys a quick example of how to edit one of these files. I'm just going to go into archive real quick. I'm going to go down. I'm going to paste a little bit of boilerplate code. Uh, this is just a quick timeline, very simple, if I'm honest. If I could give a quick shout out to anybody specifically uh, this has been a amazing package dash main time components uh, you guys have been phenomenal uh, they have a really amazing project where they are bringing react components into dash and I'm very grateful for their work and for anybody else doing the same because I have no desire to learn uh, react but I love the react foundation and the front end and I love what dash has been able to do as far as just building this out so what this is is it's just a bunch of different components uh, they have 70 different components in the react library that's focused on building out dash applications uh, I recommend join their discord support them if you're able uh, and just check out you know what they have here in the documentation but with that I'm gonna jump back into the project and all I'm doing here is I'm going to you know name this uh, timeline just so I have a specific reference to this widget that I just created which is a timeline widget uh, then if I go back into the application over here uh, I can run this just to get an idea of what it looks like prior I'm gonna go back over here and I'm going to go into the layout because uh, what we have and I'll show you just to give you an idea of where we're at because we're in archive right now but if we click on archive we get brought up to the page it's just a simple you know HTML says this is our archive page. If we go back into PyCharm, we can see that this is our archive page and then it just has another div. So if I replace this div right here and if I call this uh, timeline because that's what we called the you know component that we just built up here and if I rerun the application itself, go to archive, we can see that the component that we just created is here on the screen. So that's how fast it is to get you know, components on registered and just working. And the way that Dash works and its uh, convention is each one of these is its own, you know, component. You could use HTML, you know, you can use Dash maintain, uh, you could use Dash Bootstrap components. Uh, you can actually use uh, Dash uh, Material UI. Uh, there's a few other options available, uh, but all you are really doing is you're putting it within divs and HTML, which is just basic HTML, you know, fundamental language that you should have an understanding if you're even interested in jumping into this. Uh, HTML isn't that hard to learn. Uh, the only thing that is just a little bit tricky is like there's some ways, like for example, a div, right? If you want multiple objects in a div you have to create a list so you'll understand whenever you get more uh, integrated into you know understanding the language that it's really simple to build out you know projects and you could just bring in a bunch of these different timelines like that within a div and uh, we will see this rendered but the thing about it is is that if you want multiple objects like this you're going to need to put them in a list so that's how this works so if I run, run this one last time and we go to archive, we can see that we have all of those registered within the application. So 
it's really simple. Uh, and with that, I just wanted to thank you guys for listening and watching. If you find this useful at all, please subscribe, like, uh, join our Discord if you have any questions. We have over a thousand members and I'm trying to grow it out. So go into uh, the pip install Discord, which will be in the links down below. And we have a bunch of different uh, ways where I'm going to be expanding this. I just basically redesigned it so that it will be useful for programming and for my goals moving forward. Uh, with that and the application at hand, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm juggling. I've had over 50,000 views just one day posting the work that I was doing on Reddit, and I had a really amazing positive response from the people out there that were able to look through my project and I'm excited to see where this scales in the future but in order for me to be effective I need more people subscribed to the YouTube channel and I need to start to foster that community that I can rely on uh, to scale important work forward uh, so with that I'm just going to teach you everything that I'm capable of teaching and we will take it from there one day at a time and with everything said I will see you guys in the next one